Hey guys, I'm still out in Europe filming for you and what I started doing is the evolution of warfare, the evolution of modern war that started way before World War II, way before World War I. It started before the Franco-Prussian War in the 19th century, but what I'm starting to do is visit the first forts where they started developing the steel domes with cannons, with howitzers, the ways of modern war that we see the final evolution of in World War II. And I'm gonna go to this really cool fort. You're gonna get the walkthroughs, the quick, rough walkthroughs, because as I'm on the road and I'm filming my way through Europe for a month, I just can't really go in depth with episodes for you guys like I can at home. But we're gonna put it all together when I get home. And I found some things for the last Nazi secret that literally scares me. And I really, truly do not know what to do about it. But for now, when I'm traveling, I hope you'll come with me as I'm enjoying some of these forts, this French, Prussian, German. Well, they all actually owned it and worked on it, but I haven't actually been. Don't know what to expect. So go, let's go have a look. Now, Fort de Plapaville's main building was a star fort. It was constructed in 1867 during the Second Empire by Napoleon III. It wasn't, however, quite finished in the time for the Franks German War in 1870, and the German engineers would improve and complete it in 1871 and again in 1898. The fort mounted about 100 guns and had a garrison of about 1,600 men. During World War I, the fort did not see much action. It was used as a rest station for German soldiers traveling to and from the front and was known as Festus Alvesleben. At the armistice, it was handed back to the French. However, in 1940, after the German occupied it again, Heinrich Himmler reviewed troops of the 1st SS Division there. In 1944, there was very heavy fighting for quite a while around this and other forts around the Metz. After the war, it was handed back to the French, used by the Air Force, and abandoned from 1995. So we're here in a little forest, in the what used to be the outer ring of the defenses of Metz. We're in France, and there's a fort here that I wanted to see. And it's abandoned, so I have no idea what I'm walking myself into. However, well, I see a yellow wall. What makes this so interesting, except for the part that it says attention danger, as the only sign in English I've seen. This fort was built in 1867. And Germans took it quite quickly after France and Germany declared war in the 1800s. What's interesting here is there was, there was a hundred guns here and there were steel domes. There were cannon emplacements in steel domes here before World War I. And I think that is interesting. So this fort is 150 years old, or this building, 1896. And what makes this so interesting was there was a hundred cannon positions here. And this was in 1870. Of course, the Germans took it over after the German-French War. The Prussians were stationed here, trained here. Did not see much action in the World War I. But the Germans having, every time the Germans occupied this fort, they would upgrade it. And down here's the water. This would be a support building or a stables. So now we're remembering to always look down. This looks like generator room. This is not the main fort at all. Right. Yeah, these, these are mounts for generators, machinery. After the armistice in World War II, of course, the Germans reoccupied their fort. And it was fought for very heavily against American forces in 1944. Whereafter, it was in use. Jesus, this is a dark and dank place, isn't it? <laughs> um, it was in use by the French Air Force. up until 1995, 
which means that some of these steel domes might be intact and have survived. And I would love to see a steel dome that is 150 years old. This is a uh, wet and damp place with a lot of holes in the ground. And it will be absolutely, don't tell me, don't tell me this is one of the domes up here. Jesus, this is one of the domes. Hot damn! This is one of the cannon positions. This is one of the old cannon positions. This is the inside of the dome. This could be a 150 year old steel dome. Although, although, these were upgraded. This would rotate mechanically. Of course, the Germans upgraded both World War One and World War Two. It was upgraded. Here's an ammunition lift to a lower floor. Wow! Oh, I can't wait to see the top of this thing. And I am walking somewhat slowly because. So this is the downstairs where there will be ammunition, which I am imagining Yes, it's right back here, back here. So here, a little seat. It's probably just a little seat, but here is the other side of the ammunition elevator leading up to the cannon. And then this would be the ammunition storage. And a red brick and there's cement. What the upgrades were and when which upgrades were made. It's almost impossible to tell when I don't have somebody who's really familiar with this place. Speaking of abandoned forts, this is an abandoned fort. I'm wondering. Yes, here is. Wow, the crank is still here. The actual hand crank is still there, leading up to another dome. It still has the maker's mark on there, I think. No, this is rusty. But the wood handle is still there. And ammunition storage in there, of course. Yes. And then, something that looks like a stick. Somehow I'm glad there are no staircases leading down here because <laughs> it's wet up here. Um, being down from this uh, seems a little trouble. So here's another, here's another ammunition lift. Yes, well the handle's broken. And here's another dome in there. Wow, what are the chains for, I wonder? Wow. This is just awesome. Here is <laughs> yes. The rotating machinery. Just I guess this is not a racing dome in any which way. This is just rotating. And then we have the dome up here. Now somebody try to climb up there. No, that's not going to happen. Let's see if I can extend this and race this up there. 
This is the dome where the cannon will be. And up there, that's where the cannon will protrude. I did not, I did not expect to see this. See this dome here. So I'm guessing that is still, that part is still underground and the, just the dome is protruding up there. And then back to the chains that, I, I, it wouldn't be from ammunition handling, it's the elevator here that will go all the way up and I don't want to be hanging from there. Something to find out. Fort de Plapperville. And I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. But still, I mean, look at the soot here up on the roof, which is arched. I think there used to be a light here that looked like a newer light fixture. Wow. Could be fused storage. Those steel doors and uh, bricks. I think the bricks are original of the 1870s. And this looks like. I would be guessing this is where the casano, where the men would sleep, maybe. I'm just guessing some shelves or storage, something would been suspended between the hooks. That's ventilation. There could have been beds here. It's a little hard to tell. And, uh, I don't think this is a false defense. It's just pointing into a wall wouldn't give people any is where I'm sorry I'm just flipping down the floor now again there's holes everywhere here. So I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to stop through here. I'm so glad I did. I think there's gotta be another dome or two up here. Yeah, see if you know the staircase up. Yes. Oh, this is a little darker in here. There's the seat from... I mean, this would rotate. That's the ammunition lift. I don't know what's up there. I just wonder... Yeah, I hear, there's no light coming from up there, so that's all closed. dome is held up. So I'm guessing the whole thing would just a little rotate, the top would rotate. I just don't know how it was powered, how it was moved. <laughs> there's a rodent up there being a little worried. So there's a mechanism over there. Where the chains were hanging from. I don't know if this rotated at all. Well, that was just a support beam. Maybe it, maybe it was just the guns that would have a slight traverse, but for such a large expense, it doesn't make sense that they wouldn't. See, I'm taken over by the French military after the war. I doubt they use this, but it wasn't stripped and scrapped and graffitied like so many other places. <laughs> this is where I'm not that sure where I came in. <laughs> this must be the closest presensive. 
sink. This was the close defense position. Clearly not a World War I, World War II standard. This is pre both wars. Very thin walls. You see out and just fire your rifle. Let's go up on the roof of this thing. I can't wait to see this from the outside, from the top side. So yeah, that's, a, that's a building there. And if there was a hundred guns in this area in general, this is just a small building. And I have honestly no idea what's awaiting in here but I know what this is yes yes ha cannon still in place not only that the roof has tar on it for the weather one of that what war that came with I'm guessing very short barreled howitzer of some sort. So this was the roof of the building I was just in. See, that's where it's missing. That's why it was so dark in this tar because the cannon is still in place. Yes. <laughs> I'm I know I'm sounding a little enthusiastic here. But yeah, this will clearly rotate. There's a separation between the solid foundation and the dome itself. So it will rotate. Wow. Once. Wow. Can't believe the cannon is still in there. That's just awesome. Yeah, this is what the position would look like without the cannon. Now, if there's a hundred guns here and I found a building with four, I think we should probably be stumbling into every single one of the others. Wow. This is going to be a really interesting little exploration here. I don't know if I should stay on the path or I should go out on the bigger path. I really don't know. Oh, wow. I think we're going to go out on the bigger path and see. Sorry. See, this, this is totally different construction than both World War One and World War Two. <laughs> Finds a gorgeous building. Um, it almost looks like old stables. Whoa, whoa, look at that. Look at this. There would still have been room for a double door. And this looks like the old, original, certainly not an airlock or anything like that, but, and 
down. Might be lower level. All right. Fort de Plapaville. What else have you got? All right, since it started to rain a little bit, the next building down. <laughs> that looks similar. However, I'm also seeing this in underground. Yes. Underground tunnels in the rain. Perfect timing. What happened here? Holy son of donkey. Wow. We have a... Uh, I would imagine this could be an ammunition entrance. It looks like 1800s masonry. I mean, look at the walls here. This is, this is gorgeous. We got a slight arch. And this should be a light fixture. Light fixture? For those of us trying to speak English. I see a door. That's a good sign. <laughs> Clearly smaller. This is clearly an 1800s archway, and it's tall. It's quite tall. This is probably seven feet to the ceiling here, which is not what I would expect it. This is what makes it fun. I have no idea what to expect, except mosquitoes, of course, and spiders. But that's okay. We got used to them. Wow, this is keep going. Don't know where it's going. But I think I'm sloping slightly up, maybe a 15 degree incline, maybe. I absolutely no idea what to expect here. This has been standing here for 100 years plus, so it's not going anywhere. For those of you who are claustrophobic, just want to let you know that. I know there's at least one entrance, the one I came through, so I'll, I'll be okay. Just don't know where I'm going. Damn it, this is long. We're looking at three, 400 meters already, and I'm sloping upwards slightly. So maybe the first turn off will probably, well that goes into the other artillery building. And this probably goes into the larger fort. I don't know, I see light. No, I don't. Oh, maybe I do. We'll see. We'll see what we'll see. Okay, here's a change. Now turn into cement. Here. That would work up here, little dowels. And a dowel up top as well to mount things on. <laughs> I 
I wish I could give you some more background on this. There's some rubble going on here. Okay. Well, that's going up to a hatch that's closed, which lead this to could have been an emergency exit. I mean, hot down. Hot down when you have more. And here is part of a steel frame from a door. And here we have holy, we have a gun pit that will rotate and we know how because it was manually with a hand crank. That's how they turned it. So this is definitely pre-World War I, World War II. This is in the late 18th. This is one of the original steel dome. It must have been. This World War I, they wouldn't crank them like this. I mean, I know there's a ladder. And I, there's this piece of me that's optimistic. Well, there's a piece of me that's optimistic. Here is... What in the hell is that? I gotta get up there somehow. Okay, we're hanging on to this. This is a rotate. What the hell is this? This is an enormous cylinder that just takes up the room. So. What the hell is this? I gotta see this from above. But look at the way the dome is, is made. This is so different than what we're used to. But I don't know what this is. This is. this is the roof looking straight up. It would rotate, or the thing would rotate. This, I mean, suddenly it looks like a bracket. And this is all there was at this. Maybe it was vision, fire control. At least there was electricity in here at some point, but of course it was upgraded a number, a number of times since the French and Germans continuously seem to trade this place. So here's the thing that will be cranked. Look at this. Look at the grooves in this. How you can tell the hand grooves. This is actually worn down. This is worn down for somebody holding it like this. So this was, this fits right in my hand, right like this. It fits. This groove here fits just perfect here. Somebody held this and cranked it time and time and time again to the point where the wood actually wore down. Wow, I have got to know what this thing is. I want to see it from above. And now, for the massive trek back. Wow, wow, wow. These are all stones, this is metal. But I'm going to be nice and not have you walk all the way back with me. Alright, I've actually timed my walk down this small little tunnel to 2 minutes and 15 seconds at a decent pace to come down to the assembly point here. And this is the other tunnel. Yes, this leads in under the building, I think. 
there is a, ooh, this looks new. Well, it looks new, it looks newer. Let's go with that. And there's a ladder leading out into a fucking door. Look like the same type of hand crank system. Hang on. Look like the same type of system. I mean, clearly it will rotate, twist the gears. And that would have been a hand crank fitted right here. And this is a munition hoist. And this staircase doesn't look all bad. And look at this. There used to be a banister. Oh, what do we got up here? What do we got up here? Yeah. Yes. This is where it was short. How it would fit, just like the other domes. Wow. You can still see all that, all the writing. The Germans gave it a different name than the French, obviously. Which is listed right there. And now you know exactly where I am crawling underneath. That is just something. Fenton is right about authentic writing. I wonder if we can find one of these. But the cannon is still in place. I think there's some right in here too. Yeah, manufacturer's mark. Something. Looks like there's more cabling left on the wall there. But let's go have a look see. Down here because this looks uh now this is, this looks like a similar type building, but it looks bigger. The hallway, the arch hallway seems bigger. What is this? There's a mount on the ceiling in there. This is where the generator was. Uh, air exhaust. So the machinery was in here that looks fairly modern and upgraded. Yeah, this is like the other building, but I think half of this building is hidden in under underground, and this seems longer. This is identical to the other building that we were in before. Here's another cannon position. They look like really heavy. Yeah, the cannon is in place there. And the ladder seems to be too. Well, yeah, what's the worst that can happen? Right? Fred Solders trained here until a few years ago. So, what's the worst that can happen? What in the name of God was this thing? There you go. That's where... Fuck, there's a bat in here. Stop it. Stop batting. How's the candle? Like oh, very short. Powered, sir. And there's... where the barrel was and that's where the breach was but the breach is I mean it's there's so little room here's something writing on the wall again yes we have the gears that were spin plates people sit on wow I need to know more about this We made another bat friend. And these little 
little vents here. So this is where the exit to this building, ground level. So I am at ground level. This is where I came from. Outside gallery. Now I'll continue down here. Now here's a pipe coming right across here. It does not look like it have always been here. Or it certainly doesn't look like it was built for what on earth. So this air pipe, I'm guessing this would be a vent leading to the outside. And you know what? I remember pre-World War I and World War I, you had a different type of powder in your cannons. You had cannons and you were beginning was seeing breech loading cannons. The problem is the powder was still very, very dirty and it gave off a lot of toxic fumes when fired. Yeah, these definitely look like bunk beds. Um, so when you fired the cannons, you would need to evacuate the air. And that is probably what all these pipes are for, because all these pipes lead towards the cannons. Except, now the pipes are sitting here on the ground. A lot of mud in here. A lot of stuff that's broken. I'm guessing this will flood more than it is now. Yeah, this is identical to the other building. I am so glad I found this because this is a perfect example for World War, pre-World War I and World War I and World War II fort. Here's another cannon position. And you know what? There's another hallway that's rolling down. Opposite end of where we came in. I have no idea what will be in here. But there's the utility shaft and the floor. And this is sloping down at more of an angle than the, the other one leading up to whatever that was. So, and now I'm seeing the cemented walls already, but I have no idea where this is going. I, I, I feel air towards me. Or maybe it's just the, the spiders crawling around in my head. That's all right. We have that talk. <laughs> yeah, this is a steeper slope. This is more like 25, 30 degrees. And we have these neat little indents for, well, I don't know, but they ran electricity ran down here and see whether the bricks on the ceiling again. Hmm. I see multiple rooms down here. I am confused and intrigued. And if I look around here and there's another tunnel, holy son of a motherless goat, there's another tunnel. Wow. This is a huge underground complex. And this is another artillery barracks. Yes. These are all interconnected. Octominum. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, this is exactly what that is. Another building, exactly identical to all the others. So I wonder if that hallway had something to do with fire control, because that last one was not firing. 
This is not the building. This is, this is the building. This is the building we were in. Was it, isn't it? <laughs> I don't even know. I just see there's... It said something there. And then there's cannon position. I did not see this. Well, not exactly turned around. But well, there's a hallway and it's still raining, so you know what? Let's get the tires. And... <laughs> this is where I would imagine that this is another two minute hallway with a slightly broken floor there. This is leading upwards, and electricity, or I suppose it could be telephone cables, ran this way. Expecting to see at the end of this a hand crank identical to the other one with something big cylinder that will race up at the other end. That is what I am expecting. Well, what I may find, I have no idea, but I have to find them and see them from the outside. Absolutely. And remember. We haven't gotten to the main fort yet. These are just all the artillery positions. And, I said, there's a hundred guns positioned here. Wow, there's gotta be a lot of them. That was a bat. <laughs> hey buddy, you all saw the bat ticket. Stairs, stairs. I hear birds. This is, I can get out of here. Well, we're not going out. We're not going out, we're not done yet. Staircase. Bunk beds. Air pipe, table. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, buddy, how's the bat? Observation dome and a bat. And the bat, you'll note, by the very, he's looking at me angry. Small little cupola. <laughs> All right. Makes sense, observation dome. There'll be a little table. I think these have just been placed here to get them out of the way. Okay, so this is different than the other one. But that was also to note that they would in some way be expecting some sort of close quarter combat. It wasn't just artillery long range. Again, close defenses where things go wrong for artillery forts of the day when the Germans rewrite the book and show up with new stuff. All right, walking down, see you at the entrance. Um, being a little protective with the camera because it is raining. This is the road down here, the artillery forts we found were, and then there's this little building, but of course there's a gate with a ginormous chain I don't do gates. I thought people realized by now that I don't do gates. I'll find a hole. So now, I'm gonna go down here. I think that is the main fort down there. That's 
not raining that much. Yes. I see the moat. Well, if it wasn't so overgrown, you can see how ornate the corner there is, which is a very neat feature. Now we just have to get in there. But as it has done me the courtesy of stop raining, as I have always said it would when I need it to, you see, I have a deal with the Almighty One. My deal with the Almighty One is two things. It will always stop raining when I need it to. I will always find parking. Love, well, I got parking. Yes. Big moat down there. See a building over there. I'm still walking along the wall and there's a superstructure on the plateau in there. So, with some luck, this might be the entrance. Don't know why I think that, just because the road is leading to it. Well, let's see. Somebody left us an unlocked gate, as requested. <laughs> they did. All right. Clearly, again, a design that is not World War II. A World War I. Larger firing positions, thinner walls. Fort de Plapaville. Yes. I always knew it was here somewhere in this area where I was going anyway. And I always sort of had a hunch it was large and interesting. I don't know why. Um, it just, you see a picture of a place and sometimes it just gives you that, you know, that sexy inviting smile that says, come here, you've got to see this. Sailor. Too far. <laughs> so here, one side of the moat where you could, drive vehicles could drive down there. Now we're coming up on the top, the overgrown moat, an old gatehouse. And literally an actual road driving into. Don't know where. Seeing the little pillar up there that looks very ornate, decorated. There's still a little firing port in there, a little slit, horizontal. Wow, now here's more. I guess this is not that many centuries out of needing archers on the walls when this was originally designed in 1867. There's the main building. Yes. <laughs> oh, hell yes. Oh, son of a donkey, yes. <laughs> Holy hell in a handbag. This is huge. Damn. <laughs> hey guys. Hey. Idiot talking to himself. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thank God for that. Got some very nice locals here. I mean, this is just, I want this rebuilt into my summer house. And there's a driveway down to deliveries. I'm gonna take the middle floor, just because, well, it's here.
That yellow brick building in the far end looks newer. You know what? We're gonna go inside and we're gonna find out. I don't really know where to start. <laughs> this is an enormous fort. What an amazing place. And I've only just got here. I think I should go up. Now that I've been in the tunnels, going up is an option, I guess. Okay, this is interesting. There's a wooden, that's a wooden floor. There's another story above me, and here is the winch from hell. And another one, which means I'm standing in the elevator. Yep, that's the elevator to bring stuff upstairs. Okay, that makes sense. Why on earth would the French military abandon this place? It is absolutely gorgeous. I could see no better place for a military academy than this. I truly could not. I could see no better place for a summer house for me than this, but okay. That's uh, kind of like... I doubt there was always a dead end there. Okay, so I'm just gonna follow them. Bars? Person for the window? I guess so people wouldn't fall out. setting things on fire in here, and I get that, I guess. No, I don't get that. You know what I mean. I feel like I have rounded the corner. Then again, with all the damage the Americans <laughs> accidentally post-war have done, I guess you can throw paintballs at me now, I get it, but oh, damn, it's broke everything. That's just so sad. It's broke all this. And it was not that many years since the French military left here. There's no reason to. There's no reason to break everything for anybody. Some people just like destroying other people's fun. Please don't miss the out. This is the out. One tour of the bathroom is enough. Well, there's been some fires in here, clearly. This does have very much of a medieval feel to it. Um, like I said, what the year was designed, it does have 
<laughs> Look at that hallway. Isn't this just gorgeous? This is not, wait, what is that? A piece of furniture. I mean, Back in the, one of the earlier times the Germans and the French were getting ready to go at it was before 1970. And before everybody wanted to do battle over Metz, and this is located in the northwest of Metz. And the community on top of it, which names the fort. Look at that view. Look at that view. Have fort on one side and on the other. And here's another hallway, so there's parallel hallways. I should have parallel hallways. Look at the beautiful glass windows there was there once. Alright, we're carrying on. I would actually like to look for a staircase going up. I'll take one going down too. I'll say that. A nice pile of floors here. Way too much graffiti, but oh, what are you gonna do? Well, I asked for a way up. This has such a medieval castle feel to it. And I know exactly what that dent is, is to be able to turn something longer. Oh, so this is up under the ceiling. This is a bit dark up here. Unless this is just smell of burnt in here. Oh wow. This is not a place I can really walk. I don't think. Gotta find some more of the artillery forts. But I think on this one, indoor basement something, it's gonna be more possible. overgrown, it'll be a hard crawl through all the brush up there. I don't know if anything's there. This is where, having done minimal research, it's super interesting. For this, I have no idea what I'm going to find. <clears throat> another hallway. I have found another hallway. Yay! This is a gorgeous fucking building. 
Now this is the section I think that looks newer. It, ha it feels like it looked newer. If that makes any sense to anyone. I have no idea why there's a phone booth in here. I know, I'm just kidding, it's not a phone booth. It's a hoist. See the motors up here? I think I know what this is. I think this is the office's mess. It used to have nice tile floors. Probably a little heating. Don't know. Ventilation room, I'm guessing. I hear voices. Look at this building, look at this room. Gorgeous room. Gorgeous building. Could do with other graffiti, but all these rooms are identical. I mean, uh, there's some 1600 people stationed here. This used to be a door that's bricked off. Yeah, I can't tell. So all these rooms would have been interlinked in some way. I can't help thinking officer's mess still. Let's see what's up here. I have one of these little spiral staircases. What was that when you get old? You don't want a spiral staircase. You don't want a staircase when you get old. But it does continue up. I know, I just passed the floor. We'll get back to it. Corrugated metal roof. Remember the forts we've seen before, pre World War I, had that. There's an access to the outside. Wow, again, to both sides. Wow, I'm already over at the other end. Look at that. Look at that gorgeous fort. All right, we'll go back in again. See what's on this floor. And the one we skipped, juiced for the hell of it. Yay. <laughs> and are you not all so proud of me that I got a proper light for you? This time, finally. Uh, why is the doors half open? All right, so, hoist for elevator-ish. I wonder what you would... Okay, this is it. It's a mechanical, technical room with the roof access. Basically nothing else. That's fine. Fair enough. Good. Then we can go back down to the floor where we've skipped. With a nice archway here. There's also nothing. There's nothing here. That's strange. Huh. 
All right, I guess we're just going to continue. How can you abandon such a building? It looks like there's a division of building or one section is newer, of newer construction than the other one, although identical. It turned out that in 1871, there was a very serious powder explosion that caused extensive damage to the barracks and required the reconstruction. I don't understand why the Germans would want to fight for this building and be quartered here. So I'm guessing underground there would just be storage since you could drive a couple of trucks in here. And obviously I'm not expecting to find any military equipment or gear or anything. But I do really like this building. I kind of want to show it to you all because it's absolutely stunning. I have a little moat, a little walk bridge. I guess you theoretically could defend this. Although I would certainly imagine if it ever got to that, some things had gone wrong before that. So you drive your supplies in here. And clearly there's been fire down here. Don't know if somebody set a campfire. Very ill-advised, I would say. I mean, when it was constructed, there would probably be a cold store. Although, this looks like a bar. I am pretty sure the bar is post-war, but it is still a bar with a fairly modern air conditioning. And a sea bar. Which would we would sort of expect there's probably gonna be a bathroom. Don't know why I would think that, but I was right. Showers, bathrooms, thing broken. But when this fort was built, Coal was still very much in use. So there would have been space allocated for it, obviously. I would never have been surprised if somebody had turned this into a bar, a restaurant, post vacation of the French Air Force. But again, there are holes in the ground. What a gorgeous place. Now we gotta find out. Okay, clearly that would not be Speaking of holes, there's always a hole somewhere in the ground when you're not looking. And just as I almost got back to the bridge, I look up and look at the outer walls surrounding the fort, and there's a door. So little nicely made staircase. What have we here? We have an entrance to somewhere. Heavy steel doors. Lots of cabling. Wood floors. What little building is this? With an underground. Oh, I'm guessing it's old. With an underground. It's 
So, there's an underground to the lock. Fortunately, there's no ladder down there. Wooden door, metal door, guard room. Put this halfway up on the moat, so that doesn't really make sense. Huh. Since the guard room is that way, man, there's the wall protecting the fort, and where this is with an underground. Guess I have to come back with a rope that I left in the car. Well, the fort is well hidden in behind a wall and a moat with a driving access, and a dirt embankment, and a gate in another wall. <laughs> it's well protected, for at least from direct fire. And this will be the guardhouse, literally, with little firing ports. And this was probably used recently because this floor is somewhat newer in design. And there's a toilet paper holder, so I'm gonna go with yes. Just a little guard house, a couple of ports. See if we can find some more cannons and whatever else will protrude from the ground here. I am so glad I saw this. I would love to have seen this in its heyday. I mean the heyday of when it was built or the heyday of when the French had a World War I or when the Germans had a World War I or when the heyday when the Germans had it World War II or the heyday of the Air Force after. I don't know. Just one of the heydays. Work with me here. Of course, and there's this little house here that I'm curious about. And since it's raining, I think we'll just hurry up in there. In here where it's not raining. This is right outside the uh, the main fort hoist to the underground. It smells of gasoline in here. So you can see the access to the fort, but not like there's a firing position or anything in the sense that we're sort of used to. Although there are heavy steel guarded doors here. This would be on the outside of the fort. I have series hooks in the ceiling. Uh, brick brick and then brick or brick. Brick or brick. <laughs> brick or brick, that's a hard word. Yeah, this is pretty much all there is to these. And then a hoist down to, ooh, a lower level. But even if I could get in there, it would be fenced off. There's a fence inside what looks like a hoist to an underground of this tiny building. That makes no sense. Stuff on the walls to hang things on. Attachments. Hmm. Now I'm up here about some 400 meters from the artillery forts trying to see if I can find the observation dome I was inside underneath but since it's, it's very overgrown up here well, we'll see I'll look for it so the artillery forts are down there behind the slope 
and the road I walked up. This is a small hill with a clearing. I would imagine this would be the perfect place to put it. But since it's retracted, there's nothing that sticks up. Here is one of the forts. And this is the corner. Which means I might be walking on top of the tunnel. In completely uncleared brush, I have no sense of how far the other one was fixed in place but I really wanted to see this one because it looked retractable wait a minute here is <sighs> looks like a little corner trench I really wanted to see that from the outside. And here's the fort with the first cannon position right there in the building. It means somewhere here in the woods the dome would be. Unless it's been covered up or I may have to call it. I spent an hour crawling through the woods, the brush in here, looking for domes. I know one will be sticking up, the other one, I don't know, it's lowered, it could be covered up by dirt. Somewhere there's going to be a coordinate that somebody put somewhere online, or there'll be a photo, and I'll come back to it. After all, there's a reason to come back here, there's a lot of reasons to come back to this fort, and to all the things that are hiding out here in the nature. This is a place that's definitely worth visiting. Let's see what else is here. Now I'm seeing a mound over here. You know what I always said, if, it's, if we're in military nature and it sticks up, let's go have a look at it. It sort of does stick up, doesn't it? Let's see what's on top of this little hill here. I came from the road is up there and I said there was a little hill sticking up here and it looked dug in and on top of it all of a sudden it drops really steeply to the side. I'm guessing there's something in here. I think we need to go down there and have a look see what that might be. I mean, with the road up there and this enormous hill, it sort of sticks out, doesn't it? Ah! Ha 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 There's a thing! Didn't I say there would be a thing here? What have we here? Now, if I were to guess, I would say this is in munition storage. And it was built in 1887. And it says five, so there's probably five of them. This looks like the early version of the munition storage as the Germans did in the 40s, 1940s. Let's go have a look. This must be munition storage. It just has to be. But you can clearly see the masonry from the 1800s. An extra brick in there. And a red brick. Yes. This got five halls of minutes and storages. Probably there would have been a beam through here. I don't 
ceiling hooks and ceiling floors, vents. Pure and simple munition storage. Beautiful big building. Obviously, we're going to have a look in every room. So far, they're all identical. But there was racks on the floor. You can still see the indents. Got some wiring sticking out here. Ventilation there. And the room there. Remnants of the door. Oh, window. This is different. This is not bricked in the same way. But it looks identical. And there are cabling wires coming out of the floor. And more mounts on the walls. But I mean, this is such a beautiful building with the designs and the arches <laughs> and the brickwork. And the styrofoam. Yeah. So, so this is turned into a double. Same arms and floors, same types of shelves that held these. That's very neat. Even on the inside, if you look on the inside, you look at the archway over the door. So much nicer than the utilitarian 1940s bunker design, isn't it? Now I wonder if there's more down the hill. But certainly this is. A beautiful building, just for ammunition. Got to do it with style. God bless the French. Initially, I thought they were vehicle shelters. These are gun pits. With identical dirt mounds, same elevation, facing the same direction. These are open pits where cannons would sit. In each one of these, you have a howitzer. And they're just rows of them. But they look exactly like vehicle shelters, obviously. Same design, protected by earth walls. Still, I'd rather be inside one of the forts, but not room for everybody. You see, these are just lined up. And I wonder how many more of these there are in this area. And of course, the it makes perfect sense that you had these cannon pits right here because the ammunition storage is right there or at least magazine number five so there's got to be at least four more and you're not going to put 1600 troops here just for the two encased cannon positions so a lot more of these and a lot more magazines and i don't know if there's any more steel domes or turrets or what there is but I think it's such an amazing treat to see a world, a pre-World War I armored dome. Most people will just believe that, well, World War I was trenches and everything mechanized and steel and encased was just World War II. Not so. 
I, deep in my heart, I feel I am not done with this location. I am not done with Fort de Plapaville at all. There's so much more out of these forests I'll need to go look at. But to understand how World War I and World War II, just evolutions of technologies that started in the late 1800s, we had to see this. And to really fully understand, comprehend, pre-1900s steel domes with howitzers, cannons. Amazing. Yeah, about that little thing here, what do we got? What do we have here? What in the hell do we have here? Well, well, well. Something else. Something else built in to you. How much is out here? Well, let's start by finding out what's in here. And God bless you guys in France for not locking doors and leaving this open so people can actually go see it. Whatever it is. Well, that's a tree. Don't know why there's cinder block or rebar. I have no idea what I'm looking at. Machinery, water tank, holder, boiler. I have no idea. Underground with all the crap in it. Something in the fire. I have no idea what this room was or what this building was. Again, it's 18th century and there's a big gate into this small room. This could be a boiler room, engine room, cold store. I'll take your guesses. Late 1800s military architecture is not the book I read this morning. That's the room we were in. I'm thinking there might be another one identical there. Another room with a door that's seriously, you're not this is like really? You close this one. But you left this window open. Okay. Yeah. Uh, see, tactically, this is how you sneak through the back door of things by just jumping through the window. There's a bunch of jokes in there, but I promise to be nice. So something was hanging here. close the window. You block the gate with a little plastic tape. <laughs> Leave the window open. I'm still going to go with thank you. And of course the sign over there was for the jogging route that I shall not be visiting today. However, I would feel like a horrible person if I didn't just look at all these mounds and all this here. I feel as you go for a little walk, 
hell, my hotel is closed by the time I get there. Let's sleep in the car again, right? Yay, suffer for our military art. You see this road, late 1800s, could be 1700s, 1600s. Now what have we here? Now the building. Amazing, right up from the first. It just doesn't end here. Well, I think we established that <laughs> my, that my shoe, I'm wearing running shoes. Ouvrage set two. I should have learned how to say set two in French. That would have made my ouvrage come off so much more. All right, let's see. What have we here? We have, well, a mandatory graffiti and somebody slept in here. These buildings are just beautiful in their architecture, masonry. I would imagine soldiers being stationed here there's hooks on the walls for what would probably be beds. If there's bathrooms in here, toilets in here as well, we'll sort of know. Although this is right next to the door, so you'd come right into the barracks. I think it's a little, it might be cold in the winter opening that door. Aha! Uh -huh. Or maybe, wait, wait, there's more. I don't know what. Well, there's a ladder up there to his round observation dome. Heavy hooks on the ceiling. Emergency exit. No, that doesn't make sense. What have we here? What have we here? Okay. Close to. <laughs> We're gonna go close to fence or bathroom. Um, I am thinking toilets. Toilets, a little window, definitely. So there were toilets, this was a barrack facility. Although that circular tunnel up there is a little strange. I'm not surprised at that one. Guess we have to go up top to find out how that was boarded up or what was boarded up. Wow. Inside of the bathroom. Yeah, little casana. Onwards and upwards. That's interesting because you see this is the back of the building I was just in. And then there's a walkway, and then there's another mound, either protective wall, but the whole area is riddled with dirt embankments and walls. It will make it very hard for artillery to penetrate or even shrapnel do damage, considering everything is full of these Trenches. This is a fascinating place. Coming out on the finger of one. It's like everything is just shielded by these 
ridges and grooves and holes everywhere. From the other side, you can't tell what is protecting a barrack or what is just a dirt mound or what is a cannon position. Hi, my name is Tino Strokeman, and this is my YouTube channel. I hope you enjoy history and military history as much as I love bringing it to you. And if you want to see more of the photos and documents I've used for these episodes, documentation and so on, you can go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out traveling around the world to some of these far-flung locations like Van Allen Brown's first test stand behind me, or Deepness nuclear reactor down there, or the Magital Line over there, you can donate on PayPal, uh, protection at serviceint.com. It'll be right here, and it is also on lostbattlefields.com. You absolutely don't have to, but I appreciate any help, and I love all you guys for all the support you've shown me, because history is important. We all know that, and I'm going to bring it to you.